well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Welcome to another edition of Married Arms, Cam and Company. My name is Cam Edwards. Glad that you've joined us today. It is a uh, very busy day. Andrew Pollock is going to join us here in just a couple of minutes. He was, uh, I think, perhaps the most compelling speaker on Monday night at the Republican National Convention. Uh, he is a Parkland dad. His daughter, Meadow, brutally murdered February 14th, 2018 uh, at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School there in Parkland. And Andrew Pollock ha- has not embraced the idea of gun control uh, as a result of uh, his daughter's death. He has uh, said that he's dug deeper. He wanted to find out uh, who and what were really responsible uh, for that uh, 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 massacre that took place there on uh, Valentine's Day two years ago. We'll talk with Andrew Pollock about that in uh, just a couple of minutes. Uh, but we do need to uh, note what's going on in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Hopefully, uh, either uh, later today or tomorrow, we're going to have Town Hall's Julio Rosas join us on the program. He's been on the ground in Kenosha where, uh, you know, the property damage and the, uh, the, the looting and the rioting and the arsons uh, continued to take place last night, but uh, you also had a shooting. Two people killed, one person injured. Police have not said much about this incident. I've seen, uh, you know, video and, and a lot of folks uh, say, well, it looks to be self-defense. Based on the limited videos that I've seen, I think there's certainly a, a strong case for that. But I caution people not to get too far out ahead of these stories, just as in the case of uh, Jacob Blake, the uh, individual who was shot by police in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Again, the the the, the first impulse was, oh, my gosh, uh, this guy was shot for no reason at all. Uh, he was just there trying to break up a fight, and he had his kids in the car. That is, he was just trying to leave, and then police just shot him for no reason. Well, we now know that that wasn't the case. We now know that uh, there was an active warrant out for Blake's arrest, that uh, police had actually been called out there because he was refusing to leave the area. Uh, and there are probably more details that are going to emerge in the days to come that may very well uh, change how people think and feel about uh, that shooting there in Kenosha, Wisconsin. So w- the very same thing may happen uh, with what we saw last night. What I do know is that it is an absolute tragedy that any of this is taking place at all. No buildings had to be burned. Nobody had to be shot. No looting had to take place. No violence had to occur. The choice to try to burn Kenosha to the ground, the choice to try to destroy businesses and property and people's livelihoods, that, again, was a conscious decision, as was the decision by individuals to show up and try to protect those businesses, in some cases armed legally with their firearms. I don't know about you, I don't really want to see an escalation of this type of conflict, but it seems that everybody from the media to, uh, you know, sadly, too many politicians are content to either ignore or inflame these tensions rather than trying to come up with a way to de-escalate the situation. I'm hopeful that in the uh, days and weeks ahead, some cooler heads will prevail and maybe we can see that de-escalation take place. But um, at the moment, it does not appear that that is likely there in Kenosha, Wisconsin. So with that, uh, let's talk to our friend uh, Andrew Pollack. Again, a remarkable speech, a remarkable man. And uh, Monday night, he not only uh, warned America uh, about the dangers of a Biden-Harris presidency, but he honored the memory of his daughter, Meadow, who was stolen from this earth far too soon. Take a look and a listen. Andrew, thank you so much, sir, for coming to the program. It's really good talking with you today. Oh, thanks for having me on, Cam. Uh, it's my pleasure. You know, I got to tell you, I think uh, so many gun owners, Second Amendment supporters, uh, conservatives, and, and frankly, just Americans uh, are still talking about your speech at the Republican National Convention on Monday night. This was a, an absolutely incredible speech. You, you honored the memory of your daughter, and you also issued a pretty stark warning uh, about what Americans across the country can expect with a Biden-Harris administration. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what you wanted uh, Americans to uh, to hear from you on Monday night? Sure. I, wa- I wanted them to know what ha- the true story that happened in Parkland, and, and the media didn't want to cover it. You know, before my daughter I even was in the ground and, and burying her, you know, they started that anti-Second Amendment 
uh, uh, ban all guns. You know, without looking at any facts, uh, they started, they attacked me. I had a Trump shirt on. Then they started attacking the Second Amendment before they even knew the facts. And, you know, I, I just wanted, and I took a step back, Cam, and I wanted to learn really what happened before I jumped on any bandwagon. If it was the gun's fault at that time, I'd be here talking to you. I probably wouldn't be on your show, but I'd be talking about, hey, look, it was the gun. It was, you know, that's what we really have to have to look at. But it wasn't that. It was the total opposite. Uh, all the gun laws were in place, and, and people failed. And, and I wanted people to know about, Really, the policies in place that were pioneered in Broward County where my daughter was murdered, and it started with the Obama-Biden uh, administration, uh, and we called it restorative justice. And I, and I really think I got the message out. You know, I wrote a book about it, Why Meadow Died, but I really think that I hit it out of the park on, uh, I think it was Monday, uh, about educating parents. And to me, that's what it's about. Absolutely. And I think you're right. I think a lot of parents are, are completely unaware of the policies that were in place there in Parkland uh, and the policies that are in place, frankly, in a lot of school districts around the country, the policies that Joe Biden still supports that, that in, in essence, uh, allow these problems to go unchecked, right? I mean, there were all kinds of warning signs, all kinds of red flags, and it seems like the buck was always passed. It was always somebody else's problem or it wasn't even considered a problem at all. Well, let me tell you, Cam. And you probably know this. Democrats are very simple minded. They can't take facts and, and comprehend it and come up with solutions. So what do they do? Well, let's just attack our Second Amendment. You know, that's pretty easy. Let's just blame the gun every time there's a mass shooting because that's simple for them to do it. Mm -hmm. They don't need to look at facts. They don't need to look at all the failures, what happened down the road, all the red flags that were, you know, the kid already, you know, this kid already threatened the murderer, threatened to shoot the school up, right? And you want to hear something sick? So he threatens to shoot the school up in Broward, right? They send a deputy to follow up on this call, right? Doesn't do dick, Okay, when it came time, but uh, doesn't follow up, doesn't find, doesn't arrest him, right? That same, his de deputy Eason, that deputy is one of the deputies that went to the school that day and hid and didn't go into school either. So he failed by not arresting him for when he threatened to shoot the school up. And then he hides behind his car when he's hearing shots go off in the school, the same deputy. But. That these part of these programs, this restorative justice camp, you see the sheriff's office, they sign up on it too with this, with, with these Democrats because the sheriff is an elected, uh, official. So he signs on to these restorative justice programs of not arresting, uh, kids for when they commit crimes. So when he runs, he could say he reduced crime by 35% because they just stop arresting, you know, and that's what they do. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's just a numbers game, right? It's, yeah, crime is down. Well, no, it's not really the crime's down. It's that arrests are down, but the crime is actually still exactly. there. In fact, getting worse because now there are no consequences. Yeah, exactly. You got it. And no accountability. So what really it is, by not helping kids and not showing them accountability, you set them up for failure. And Biden is promising to put these back into the public schools across the country. Okay, President Trump, people don't know this. I met with the president. I sat with him in the Oval Office. Uh, I told him what his administration needs to do. And he goes, I'll never forget it because uh, Hope Hicks was working in the White House that day. And she is freaking beautiful, this Hope Hicks. So I'm sitting, I see Hope Hicks. And he goes, Hope, I like that idea. I want to do it. And he just points his finger at her behind me. And then uh, the next thing I know, Cam, he's forming a federal school safety commission. He acted. He said he was going to do something. He did it. And then he ended these policies. It was like, oh, my God, I, it, it meant so much to me because I know those policies in Broward led to my daughter and those other 16 people get murdered. And he ended it. And Biden, a couple of things parents should, should know about or anyone who is talking to their neighbors, it's very important. If Biden gets elected, they're going to push these policies back in public schools. That's number one. Number two, the Democrats and Biden aren't for school choice, which is so important for parents around the country to be able to send their child 
to uh, they shouldn't have to be forced to send their kid, child to a failing public school, right? Mm -hmm. Just by their zip code, because I know it, and a lot of people in the country, these liberal loons are running our school districts, and they're ruined. You know what I'm saying? They're like blown out. They're like nuts. These Democrats that are running it, they're like. How I explain it to people is like picture Nancy Pelosi, right? And that's who's running the school districts in most of the in most of the states. You know that that's how it just ends up in the public schools. Yeah. So, and that and you they don't want to give parents a choice. Republicans like what we did in Florida with school choice. It's amazing, you know. Uh, Governor DeSantis, it was a close race when he won. And he got a lot of African American votes in Florida just because of school choice. Because they don't want to send it, no one wants to send their kid to a failing public uh, public school. And uh, in a lot of the areas, the charter schools are doing great for uh, for African American families, and they voted for Ron DeSantis. I know as a fact. That's that's what put him over the top. So school choice. We don't want those restorative justice programs. And Democrats are for, are for removing police officers out of schools and defunding the police. Yeah, this is something that uh, I know that you've spoken out uh, quite a bit about, uh, and you're very supportive of law enforcement. I know that you talk about, again, the failures of law enforcement that day, uh, February 14th, 2018. But that doesn't mean that you were opposed to, uh, to, to school resource officers or uh, law enforcement to actually uh, on the, the ground and doing their job. No, I was actually uh, responsible for getting a bill passed uh, one after my daughter was murdered. Uh, of there has to be police in every school in the state of Florida. Uh, so even if you live in a in a county like Broward, where they would think of entertaining removing police officers from the schools, like if even in liberal counties in Florida, they're not able to remove our police officers because we made it a law. But if you look around the country, California. Portland, Minneapolis, Chicago, New York, they're removing police officers from schools because, you know, Democrats, uh, uh, you know, they're quick to say police are racist and we can't trust them in the schools to police our kids. So, yeah, I, I, I'm all for police. I'm, I even went another step. In that bill, I'm for arming uh, teachers in the school, and we got that bill passed in Florida mm -hmm. with the proper training camp, you know, Teachers, uh, you know, and it's voluntary. So if a teacher wants to vol volunteer to go into this program, the Guardian program, it was named after one of the coaches that was murdered in that school, Aaron Feist. So it's the, the Aaron Feist Guardian program. It's 140 hour training, which is really intense. Uh, my buddy Ryan Petty, who you, who you know, yep. he went through that program and, and he passed it and he said it was like, it was so difficult. Uh, he actually, uh, on markmanship, he got he was the best in the whole class. He probably wouldn't tell you that, <laughs> but he had the best markmanship out of anybody in the whole class. My friend Ryan Petty. He, you know, he so, did not tell um, me that the last time I talked to him. With the right training. Yeah, ab yeah absolutely. Yeah, he, uh, I did because I went. I went to his graduation. Uh, it was in Polk County uh, with our friend Grady Chud, the sheriff there. And I went, I was in Florida and I made it a point to go to his graduation because uh, I knew he was proud of it. And then they, they he actually had his targets up when he graduated at the class to show his targets, what he hit. And he, he's a good shot. He's a good guy to have when if something hit, goes down. Now we need to get Ryan his uh, teaching certificate and uh, maybe put him in the classroom. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, Andrew. Yeah, he'd love it. <laughs> you know, given that you were uh, speaking there uh, Monday night at the RNC, um, we've seen, you know, one of the, the themes, I think, from uh, the Republican National Convention this week is Donald Trump talking about uh, restoring order, restoring peace to our streets. And, you know, you talk about the Democrats that are in control of our school system, but we also can talk about the Democrats that are in charge of uh, some of our biggest cities uh, and, and the chaos that is unfolding night after night. Uh, and it just seems to be ratcheting up. H how concerned are you about, uh, you know, what a Biden-Harris administration would mean? Uh, outside of our schools and in our neighborhoods and in our city streets in terms of uh, public safety. And again, a, a focus on uh, trying to ban our way to safety as opposed to actually going after the violent criminals. Well, one thing I'd like, I, I got a text from my son today because he's, he's really smart. Uh, my son, Huck, and he's watching what's going on. He bought Ruger, uh, the stock, yesterday, or and it's up 6% today. 
because of what's going on in the news. So my hats off to my son for buying Ruger. Uh, so President Trump is for the Second Amendment. All right, he's going to defend the Second Amendment. And people, you know, every, I go on these shows, I love it because they think I'm a Parkland parent and I like opposition. So they start thinking I'm a gun control guy. And then I just start lacing into them about how important the Second Amendment is. And I tell them, I go, and I'll, I'll tell you, Cam, why it means so much to me. Uh, my daughter was on the second, on the third floor, right? And, uh, I think hundreds of calls to 911 and they never went in to save my daughter. Right? No police went in, and she was stuck in there by herself with no way to protect herself. You know, she was a uh, minor in school. She can't carry. And two coaches went in unarmed. So they called the police, and no one came to help, help them. And that's what Democrats want you to do. They want you to not be able to defend your family and friends and call 911 and wait for them to come. So I'm never going to do that. And the Second Amendment, I'm never ever going to go anywhere where I can't defend my family and friends because I got to live with that, that my daughter was gunned down with no one there to defend her. So that's why the Second Amendment's important. I spoke to the president about the Second Amendment. Uh, he's going to defend our Second Amendment rights where Democrats, they, you know, they, they want you to call 911 and then they want you to, then they want to defund the police, you know, so that's, that that's uh, very important to me, the Second Amendment, and I carry everywhere. It was so easy uh, in Oregon to get my uh, carry permit. Three days, I, I already had my permit. Uh, and I, everyone out there that's listening, uh, you, you got to practice. You got to go out there and get your carry permits, or, or if it's op open carry here, but I, I like concealed carry because uh, it's important. Because there's going to come a time where you know. 911. I don't have 911 where I live. I live in the boonies. I don't even have a cell phone. So the president and and so look what's going on in these in these cities. I I, I say let them burn. I let them let them burn down. You know the, the only way they're going to learn their lesson to change the way they vote and who they elect is to have a little suffering. You know we, we shouldn't just go in and bail them out with federal funds. You see what's going on in Wisconsin. Uh, uh, it, it, uh, Portland, I, I don't get it, but I don't, by bailing them out, I don't think they're going to realize uh, they're going to change the way they vote. Uh, what do you think, Kim? I think you're right. I mean, and I, you know, I, I hate to say let them, let them suffer, let them burn, but at the same time, um, you know, uh, again, if there are no consequences, right, if, if, if you can simply uh, say, well, yeah. we're going to defund the police and we're going to expect the federal government to come in and bail us out. No, I mean, look, these mayors are responsible for their cities. And I know everybody's trying to say, well, it's, it's ultimately Trump's fault. Look, Donald Trump has, has offered, let me send in federal law enforcement. Let me come in and, and, and help. And if they say no, well, then it's clearly their responsibility to ensure the uh, the safety of the residents and they're failing to do so. Yeah, but it's kind of, you know, I, you know, you don't want people to suffer. I didn't really mean it that way. I meant like they got to, you know, look at these people that own these businesses you know yeah. it, it's terrible but but then when they go in november to vote they're going to vote for biden these people you know what i mean they'll vote for biden they'll vote for the democrat running for congress so i i don't understand it you know what i mean it's not going to happen in in a conservative town you know you go to my buddy uh, in polk county uh, grady judd or you go to other places, Idaho, or you come to my county here in Jackson. It's, they're not going to let looting going on like yeah. what, what's going on in these cities. And in Portland, I saw the the, the mayor was out with them one night, yep. uh, marching with the rioters. So I don't get it. I don't know what the answer is to, to that. But I want I don't want them getting any federal funding to rebuild, especially when they tell them to withdraw out of the out of the police stations you know what i mean right. and leave them vacant for them to get uh looted and, and burnt then then what now they want federal dollars to rebuild them yeah uh, it, it doesn't make sense well you know i did see uh on cnn last night uh, don lemon was talking about how uh you know we the, the riots have to stop the the looting has to stop it's, it's starting to affect the polling he said it's starting to affect the focus groups so his you know he's concerned about how this might impact joe biden's presidency he's not concerned about what's actually going on with those small business owners how this is impacting the community but oh my gosh if this could hurt biden's chance to get elected well now we got to tamp down on all of this so it's, it's kind of interesting to me to see how the Democrats are viewing all of this through a political lens. And again, it goes back to the, the very first point that you made, you know, even before all of the facts were known, 
uh, in, in Parkland. You had Democrats and you had an anti-gun media that were trying to, 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 to twist that narrative and, and to fit their anti-gun agenda. I think we're seeing the same thing play out uh, in terms of, you know, uh, trying to help Joe Biden's candidacy right now. Well, I, what people are going to have to wake up, I think, and just realize, you know, we can't keep voting this way uh, when you have such civil unrest going on in these cities. And for what, you know? Listen, I saw that it's terrible, you know, when you see someone get shot. Or, but uh, in these incidences, I'm, why don't these people just comply? You know what I mean? You saw the guy in Wisconsin, right? He's the, the police, My friend who's a police officer said, he should have never been able to make it to his car. They should have stopped him, uh, the police, you know. But there is a pussification going on with the police departments, uh, with these guys. They're, they're not letting them uh, unleash, you know. They're holding back. They're turning them, you know, into counselors, these police. They should have grabbed that guy before he got in the car. He should have never had a chance to reach into the car or whatever was going on. We're, we're not going to know yet. But if, the, if a lot of these riots, we wouldn't be having these problems if when the police told you, hey, put your hands on the car, and that's it. And they just said, yes, officer, none of this stuff would happen. So I don't, and, and you don't hear people talking about that. You know, when I was raised, if a police officer tells you what to do, you just say, yes, officer, and you did it. These, you know, even with George Floyd, sure, it's terrible what happened, but he didn't comply. Uh, this guy in Wisconsin, he sure as hell wasn't complying uh, before he got shot. So I, I don't know. Maybe we need to have uh, lessons what to do when you get pulled over by the police. Maybe so. Listen, Andrew, I really appreciate you coming on the program, sir. It's so good getting a chance to talk with you. Thank you for everything you do, and I really hope we get a chance to do this again very soon. Sure, Kim. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on. And, and like I said, all your listeners are going to go out and vote. They got to go and talk to their neighbors. You got to get your family, friends, if they're still talking to you. <laughs> get out and vote in November. There's so much go There's so much at stake in this election. I, I can't even emphasize how much is at stake uh, to get President Trump back in. It really is the future of the country. Andrew Pollack joining us here on Bearing Arms, Cam and Company. All right, certainly do appreciate to Andrew Pollack joining us on the program, and hopefully we will have a chance to uh, speak with him again very soon. Right now, let's get to today's Armed Citizen story, our good deed of the day, our recidivist report. We're going to start there. Second day in a row, case out of Little Rock, Arkansas. I, I, I didn't plan on it, but again, this one was just, it's just absolutely unbelievable. So here you go. Again, kind of a uh, anodyne headline, a 19-year-old suspect charged in North Little Rock teen's death kind of got to dig into the story a little bit to uh, to to figure out that this is um this didn't need to have again that this should not have occurred this didn't need to happen there were opportunities to prevent this death and this murder if the criminal justice system was actually working the way we are told that it's supposed to so the uh, Arkansas Democrat Gazette says that uh, 19 year old Travone Hayes Miller has been charged with uh, capital murder in Pulaski County Circuit Court, charged in the uh, slaying of a uh, transgender teenager, Braylon Stone, 17 years of age. Witnesses apparently told police that uh, Miller said he was going to kill the victim and later told them the victim was dead after that uh, homicide occurred. Uh, Miller was 18 years old at the time, the last person to see Braylon Stone before Stone's death. Uh, taken into custody at his residence in Sherwood, Arkansas, according to the uh, arrest record, and since then has remained in the Pulaski County Jail. He, uh, on this capital murder charge, now faces the possibility of uh, the death penalty or life in prison without the possibility of parole. Here's the thing. The Arkansas Democrat Gazette says this criminal case against Miller marks the second time that he's been charged with fatal violence involving teenagers in Sherwood, Arkansas. In 2016, Miller and two other teenagers were charged with the robbery and fatal shooting of 17-year-old Sylvan High school student uh, Byron, excuse me, Brian Allen Thompson in the parking lot of a Sherwood Recreation Center. As part of a plea deal, Miller, who was 14 years old at the time, agreed to testify against his co-defendants, and the charge of capital murder was dropped. His defendants eventually pleaded guilty. Miller's charge of aggravated robbery was transferred to juvenile court. So 14 years old, he's got a juvenile record, May of 2019, a little more than a year ago. Miller was arrested again. This time he's charged with robbery as well as second-degree criminal impersonation over an incident at a Walmart parking lot in Little Rock 
where Miller allegedly tried to take a woman's purse and persuade a man to step out of his car, both times claiming to be a security guard or a police officer. Um, no word on what happened, what the outcome in that case was, but less than a year later, March 23rd of this year, Miller was uh, caught carrying a 22 caliber pistol while he was uh, being placed under arrest on an identity theft warrant. And according to the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, even though Miller was on probation at the time because of his involvement in that 2016 killing, Miller was jailed and then released. John Johnson, the chief deputy prosecutor and attorney for Pulaski County, uh, attributed the absence of a felony firearm charge after Miller's arrest with the gun to the fact that his earlier offense was adjudicated in juvenile court, not in state court. Okay, well, what about the robbery arrest from May of 2019? Again, multiple opportunities. This, this, this kid is 19 years old. Not a kid. He's a young man. But he's 19 years old. He's already been implicated in two murders as well as a robbery. And it seems like there have been nothing but slaps on the wrist for Mr. Miller every time he's been arrested, no matter how serious the charge, until this most recent arrest, or this most recent murder, now that Miller has uh, reached the age of 19. Our Armed Citizens story of the day from Dallas, Texas, where an apartment uh, intruder shot and killed by the uh, resident of the apartment. WFAA reporting a 19-year-old died on Sunday when he was shot inside another person's apartment. It happened around 1.15 a.m. Police alleged that Darwin Shaveria had tried to get into this person's apartment without their consent. Police say that the uh, homeowner tried to stop Shavaria from getting inside, but was not able to do so, and that is when they fired the shot. When police arrived, they found Shavaria lying on the floor inside the apartment where they say he died from the gunshot wound. The uh, tenant taken to the homicide unit for questioning, uh, but at last report, no charges have been filed, and uh, this looks like a case of self-defense. Finally, our good deed of the day today, also from the state of Texas, a little bit north of Dallas in uh, Duncanville, where a uh, Duncanville police officer in the right place at the right time and able to save the life of a child that was locked inside of a hot car with the uh, windows rolled up. This was August 17th. It was about 5 o'clock in the evening. Police got a 911 call uh, from somebody who was concerned about a sleeping child in the back seat of this vehicle. Uh, officer Pinella with the uh, Duncanville Police Department rolled up, saw the nearly one-year-old strapped into a car seat alone in a vehicle, and uh, found the baby crying sweating, and covered in vomit. According to uh, local temperatures at the time, it was around 93 degrees outside, which means in that car, uh, very well uh, over 100 degrees. Officer Pinella called for paramedics. He then um, smashed the window, able to remove the uh, infant from the car seat, kept the infant in his patrol car until paramedics arrived. Shortly thereafter, police located the baby's mother, grandmother, and two older siblings nearby, Statement by the Duncanville police says all uh, indications seem to point to this being a mistake caused by false assumptions and faulty communication about the infant's well-being. But the uh, police did refer the incident to Child Protective Services as well as a, a Dallas County grand jury to determine if uh, any charges might be appropriate there in the incident. But in the right place at the right time, willing and able to uh, do the right thing to save the life of that child. Officer Pinella with the Duncanville, Texas Police Department, we thank you very much for your very good deed. That is all the time we've got for you on this edition of Varian Arms Cam and Company. Again, hopefully on the uh, next edition of the program, we'll be able to talk with our friend and colleague Julio Rosas from Town Hall, who is on the ground in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and uh, get a much better idea of the chaos and the violence and perhaps the self-defense that is uh, occurring there uh, in that uh, city in Wisconsin. But uh, stay tuned for more on that story coming up in a uh, future Bearing Arms Cam and Company. In the meantime, don't forget you can subscribe to Town Hall Media on YouTube. That way you'll never miss a program. You can also uh, check out Bearing Arms Cam and Company and Apple Podcasts, wherever you find your other refined podcast platforms. We will be back tomorrow with more of the latest Second Amendment news and information. But in the meantime, be well, be safe, and be free. And we'll see you soon with another edition of Bearing Arms Cam and Company.